old, I don't know, Goodman or something. I got two of them that are down. This one is hot. Of course, it's sitting in the sun now. But, actually, this one might have shut off. I, got, I had a kind of insane line. So I got to figure out what I'm what I'm looking at here is just cool spaces down below. There's nothing real special to them. It's kind of a, an industrial atmosphere. They're uh, in rough shape. They get taken care of, but it's hard in the environment they live in. It's, it's, this one looks off too. So figure out exactly which ones I want and go from there. So I've decided this sight glass is cleared Coil probably needs to be clean. Look, the line's a little hot. It's sitting in the sun. But this is going to be one of my guys because it's not running at all. Um, and then the other one, it looked like it was condensating but shut off. I'm going to start there because this one's not doing anything and I don't want anything to get worse. So let's start with the one that looked like it may have been running at some point. So I got no call here. Looks like I've worked on it in the past. Lots of people worked on it in the past. Uh, fixed some leaks in the evaporator. It looked like it was running. Don't push contactors in. So we just lost a call and maybe we're low on charge here. We need to go, uh, I'm not sure what happened. I gotta go check the thermostat. They just got basic mechanical thermostats down below. So I'm gonna check that. And we'll go ahead and tear the old train apart too. See what might be going on there. Looks like Oh, the line is going to be this one. I do have fuses, so I might start there. This squeaky son of a bitch. It's an exhaust fan right into the wall. <clears throat> We're on voltage. I'm going to go across my fuses. I shouldn't read anything. If I read voltage, that tells me my fuse would be open. And that would be bad. We did not mess with the disconnect, so I should have three phase voltage everywhere, 240, 240, 240. Alright, so this guy, in theory, should be running, or at least should be capable of running. Well, shit just got real. There's been a leak repair down here, I don't know how you can see, there's some oil still. Uh, underneath that condenser I see a little bit of oil here you can see the rub spot there on the back side of that line that's gonna be where I guess my uh, leak is I mean somebody took the time to repair this and put this little this is like a hard piece of rubber under that line so it doesn't rub the bottom and yet completely disregarded that just a little piece of plastic and pull that line off a little bit would have would have saved this leak low pressure switch one side of power that i have 24 volts to common here to there i got 24 volts um switch is open so it's not feeding through the switch back to my contactor coil so i'm gonna be I'm suspecting out of charge. I don't know what, you'll never read the switch, but I might put some nitrogen on this guy and probably, just, hopefully just fix that leak. It'd be quick and easy to fix. Thermostat. It should be running this thing. It's cool in here like it was running. Everything's covered in grease and oil, as you can imagine. Um, blower is on. I turned the thermostat down. We'll see if it came on. I don't think it did. So we might just have a corroded thermostat that was, I mean, hell, it was working a minute ago. I don't have anything that I'm willing to tap that with right now. Um, we'll go back up and check it, but it looks like maybe this one's just gonna be a thermostat issue. I'm gonna assume that this guy is empty just because of where I suspect the leak is. 
Oh, she's very empty. So let's put some, I gotta get some nitrogen up here. That it's, I bet it's on this side right here because I can feel it. Yeah, that's all the way through. Can't really get you a great look at it. All right, let's go. Let's go high side, low side. It's gonna be right here, guaranteed. Yep, right there. That's good enough for me. I do. I would like to see it come back. Tell me I'm not. It's coming up. So that's a good sign. We're gonna hit both of these spots and then we'll pressure test for a little while. Ain't no sense in wasting no more nitrogen. The repair looks good. That ain't gonna leak. I hit up that backside that wasn't leaking and then, then that right there. We just hit a long line and the big spot in the middle wrapped it all the way around. So I was trying to start at the bottom and just put the rod on top. Rod will follow your heat. Surprisingly, I'm holding. I've set it right above 100 and I I ain't moved an inch, so it's been about, probably about 20 minutes. I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit longer. I gotta get all my vacuum stuff up. Let's here. close the gas ballast. By the time I finished grabbing my uh, uh, refrigerant, taking down a tank, I'm at 800 microns. Now I'm pulling on my micron gauge too, but eventually we'll isolate here and it's gonna rise. But I'm actually surprised it stopped. So basically you're looking for, you're doing a decay test, you're gonna see some rise on your vacuum. Uh, review a vacuum, amazing book. If you don't like to read, go to the end of the book and read uh, the blue vac stuff and Brian Orr's stuff at the end is good information. He'll poke holes in all your other holes. There, so. I never would have expected to see 300 and some microns. Let's isolate. So, doing a decay test basically now. Again, you're, it's gonna go up until you hit your actual micron level, especially because I'm only pulling through one side. Um, and then we should see it level off, just like it did before. It leveled off at what, 1,000, what, 1,200 or something. But uh, we'll let it sit for a minute. I'm pretty happy with just, uh, just hitting 300 microns is amazing for this thing. I never would have expected that, but we'll let it sit for a minute. Probably, I still gotta clean some shit up. We'll dump some charge and run. Run as fast as we can. Six pounds, 14 ounces. I'm just gonna have to clean up all the other stuff that says 458 because I don't have any. It gets what it gets. This is one of those situations where it really doesn't matter. You can see we slowed down a little bit, 680. I mean, I haven't pulled that long either. It's been less than an hour. So we'll probably let it pull a little longer. Uh, get some tubing or something on this line and go ahead and pull it back. And probably uh, wire tie it back in place. That way the panel doesn't hit it. That would be my next concern because I pulled it out to fix it. Make sure the panel doesn't hit it. It may not have even been hitting when he fixed the leak on the bottom. He put the panel back on and then it was touching. Tied her low pressure back in. She got a little wobble. Uh, looking pretty good, 40 degree evaporator, 100 and good except for the wobble. Like I said, I'm gonna get some of this secured anyways. We got cold suction. And from what I can see is liquid in my sight glass. Yeah, we're it's probably 90 outside. We're running one, what is that, 110? 110, 90. Uh, actually, it's probably less than 90 now. Clouds came back out, but you know, 20, 30 degrees over ambient, 40 degree evaporator. It's one of those industrial, just like the chiller stuff. It's got to fix it, need it now, not yesterday. And I'd like to get home in a reasonable hour. Um, so I did what I did. This is what I had. I wasn't gonna make it in time to get the blue on refrigerant and I've only got a couple options around me that I can buy it from. So that's what I had on my truck. That's what it got. Leave a trade better than you found it. See y'all next time.